Welcome to another video in our HTML course here. Uh, we're going to be doing, today we're going to talk about HTML class and ID attributes. Okay. So and it, you've probably seen these and if you've watched other videos in the, in the course, and I said we'd eventually talk about them in more detail. But so, um, every HTML, uh, or most HTML tags, you can put what's called a class or an ID on them. So that's what a class looks like class equals and then quotation marks and then a word city is the one for this one and then there's also IDs so the ID it's the same syntax it's just ID instead of class equals quotation marks and whatever you want it to say okay so what classes and IDs are used for are to get there to make an element in your code unique or a group of elements it's to make it unique so that you can grab onto them with other languages like CSS. So for here, uh, they want everything in the city class. So there's a div wrapping the H2 and the P, and it's got the class of city. So they selected city and their CSS by putting dot. So dot is code for class. So it's saying, give us the class of city. And on the class of city and that in between those divs, everything needs to have a background color of tomato or it's kind of like a red color. The color of the text should be white, and there should be a, a two-pixel solid black, two pixel solid black border, and then there should be margin and padding around it, so there should be space around it too. Let's see if we click it, if it'll show us an example. Okay, it will. Perfect. So see that right there? So if we take this class away, uh, the styling should go away too. So let's see, at least for the first one. Run. And see, now it's just gone because I got rid of that that class on that div but if I put it back hit run there you go and then same thing IDs it's pretty much the same concept you can give something an ID and grab onto it to style but the major difference with classes and IDs are IDs are more specific and you can only have one attribute or one um, only one element can have an ID that's unique you can't so like you can put multiple of the same class on divs but you can't do this with ids you can't put id city on multiple of these because it just won't work um so and then the other thing with ids is they're more specific than classes so if you have a you can have both a class and an id on an html element and let's say that we had an if we had like id code that said we want the background color to be purple instead of tomato the ID should override the class stuff. So let's see if we can try that here. I'm going to say ID of, I'll say purple dash BG for purple background. And let me, I'm going to grab onto the ID. So it's dot for classes and then it's hashtag for IDs to grab onto IDs in CSS. And then I'm going to copy this background color code. I'm just going to put my closing tag there. Okay, and I'm going to say background color of purple, and it should change that first one to purple because the ID should override the class. Let's try it. Oh, sorry, it's not, it's, uh, we didn't select it. Purple BG. I just put the hashtag. <laughs> okay, so hashtag purple BG. There we go. See, now it's purple because the ID always wins the battle. IDs are more specific. So when you're in a practical sense, when you're programming, um, when you're programming and building applications with like JavaScript and uh, PHP and stuff like that, you're going to use um, how I like to do it when I code is like I usually leave my IDs for my JavaScript because you kind of like CSS with JavaScript, you can grab onto IDs to mess with an element and program it. I usually have my IDs reserved for my JavaScript and I grab onto the ID of it to use my JavaScript. And then I usually use my classes for styling purposes and I keep them separate. But um, that's kind of beyond the scope of this course, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of like how you'd practically do that in the future when you know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But you can use IDs for styling, too. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just my style of coding. So let's go into the code, and then we'll mess around with some. So I'm using Visual Studio Code. I encourage you to follow along with me and then do some 
coding on your own after this video with classes and IDs because this is where stuff uh, starts to kind of get fun. It's not always the funnest thing unless you're brand, brand new to this to go through like a whole HTML course. But if you've made it this far and followed along, this is going to be like more of a, a fun video because we're actually going to do some stuff and we'll use a little bit of CSS to style. But So I'm going to say in my uh, course folder, I'm going to put 16. This is lesson 16. And we'll say, I'm going to say classes dash IDs dot HTML. And I'm going to close that and I'm going to say get my boilerplate code up here say html title my document html classes and ids and then i'm going to go live on this page with live server there we go and then let's go ahead and do some more stuff here so let's say styles i guess <laughs> And then we'll go ahead and we'll put an H1 here and we'll say my heading. And then I'll put a P for paragraph tag, hit tab, and then we'll put, I'll put some placeholder text. I'll just uh, type lorem 50. So I want 50 placeholder words of lorem ipsum text. There we go. And then we can go ahead and now that it now that it has that class on there of styles, I can go up in the head of my document, make a style tag, and grab onto styles by saying dot styles. And then we can say background uh, background color. Let's do black. So everything's gonna go black now. <laughs> But then we'll have a color. So color it like controls all the text and everything in there. We'll say lime green. That should look fine. Cool. And then we can like give it padding all around of like, uh, I'll say 20 pixels. Cool. That looks better. So yeah. So in that case, we used a class to of called styles to grab onto it with CSS and just style everything. And if you remember in other videos, um, if we didn't have classes and IDs to style stuff like that, like you would have to do, make a style attribute and every uh, every separate every separate HTML element and do inline styles, and you would have to do that for like every single element to change the style of everything, and it would take a super long time and be really long and tedious. So that's why I, that's one of the main reasons why you don't ever want to use inline styles. You want to use your classes and IDs. But so the thing with inline styles though is they override anything with IDs or classes. So I can actually change the background color to uh, purple. I don't know why I'm obsessed with purple today, but and then it just overrided my styles because those are inline, and inline is even more specific um, in the rules of HTML, but. Yeah, so that's what classes are for. And then I'm just going to get rid of that inline style. And then as we talked about before, IDs are more specific. So we can say ID. Um, we can just say give it a, an ID called winner because it's going to win. IDs always win over classes. Remember that? Let's select our ID and our styles. So hashtag winner. And let's say... We'll do background color yellow, and now it should go yellow because it it's it's always gonna beat that uh, class out. It has more uh, superiority over it. So yeah, I mean those are as far as just plain old HTML goes, which is all this course is about. It's not really about the CSS stuff. Um, that's IDs and classes, but without context, you won't you know without me adding some CSS or something else, you won't understand why they're a thing. So. Um, yeah, we could even, so we could get really wild here and I could show you a little tiny bit of JavaScript so that you can also see, um, what JavaScript does with classes and IDs. So let's go ahead and grab onto this ID called winner. So I'm going to say, um, 
I'm going to use what's called a, var a variable called const. I'm going to say const winner L, my winner element equals document dot get element by ID. So there's that ID thing again, right? I'm going to put parentheses in a quote and the ID is winner. So now winner is stored in text in a in a string in, in text called winner L. And then I'm going to say winner L dot style. So you can even do styles with JavaScript and programming, which is cool. So winner dot style dot display equals none. And watch what happens. <gasps> it's gone. <laughs> so we just use JavaScript basically just to grab onto that ID of winner, which is everything in here. And I use styles in JavaScript with this thing called a variable to display none. And that means get rid of it. So it disappeared. So and then we can just comment this out and it'll come back. Pretty cool, huh? So that's JavaScript. That's way out of the scope, even more than CSS. But I just want to, without that practical con context of why IDs and classes are important, it won't really sink in. So hopefully that helped sink in. I know when I first learned IDs and classes and it was in like a regular HTML course, I still had no idea what the hell was going on because they didn't show practical application of like how to actually, you know, what they actually do. They just mentioned them, which didn't help. But hopefully that helps, you know, so it's using programming and CSS mainly. And then if you're just making like a pure HTML page, I guess you could have IDs and classes to describe what's going on with each piece of content. I guess you could use those as like descriptive words. But yep, that's everything that you need to know for classes and IDs and HTML, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.